crazy how many teams had a chance to win. The Ripper, Ripper GC went from nine back to leading by two to the near the cellar again <laughs> late in the day. It was it was so volatile counting four scores. Uh, it was it was pretty nuts, but you know the cliques have been cellar dwellers for basically two and a half seasons, and they come out victorious today. That's awesome. It'll be the summer of the cliques, definitely. So, uh, like I said, there's, there's definitely more to come from us. It was a magnificent ball striking performance. Yeah, you know, I, I got to speak to someone in his camp before he teed off this morning, and they said to me that he is finally feeling extremely comfortable out here. He's not thinking about any swing thought. He's going out there, he's swinging so freely, and it certainly showed today the way he drove the ball, the way he hit his irons, and even in his putting as well. Yeah, and mm. lives in Texas, went to school in Texas. His tour win on the PGA Tour was here in Houston, which is Texas, yeah. and now his first live win, Texas. Honestly, it was just a matter of playing solid coming down the stretch. Um, I think there was a good a switch there on 15 that I made Bernie, he made bogey, and I, I just knew that I, took, I had to party in pretty much, and it was it was mine. The 18, I made bogey, but it worked. He played unbelievable, and, and he put pressure all the way to the end, um, and it was a good battle. I love playing here. Um, obviously, Texas treats me well. It's my adopted home state, so I'm just happy to get it done again. Welcome in a very happy Monday to you in game live prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe and Ari alongside Dave Sherapan. We've got you covered here for the next two hours as we await the puck to drop for the final NHL game of the 2024 season. Who will be hoisting that cup? Will it be the Florida Panthers or will it be the Edmonton Oilers? We still got about 20 minutes. Uh, before that puck drops, so uh, we'll have uh, certainly enough time to be able to throw out a couple of last-minute bets on how to approach that. ton of Major League Baseball going on as well right now and some great series that I'm looking forward to in the early part of the week. Guardians-Orioles, for one, they're knotted up at two apiece here. We also see Dave's Pittsburgh Pirates on the road at the Great American Ballpark up Yep. one nothing over the Reds. Uh, you got to love that. And the Braves and Cardinals uh, just underway, second inning, no score there. We at least have some quality uh, late games uh, coming up as well. I mean, who is not going to stay up late to watch the Marlins and the Royals? <laughs> uh, Dave, uh, what are we uh, – let's not – oh, by the way, College World Series, last game there as well in Omaha as uh, Texas A&M yeah. and Tennessee – uh, knotted up here, one apiece uh, in this one, and it's 1-1 one, one in the bottom of the third. Uh, all about Texas mm -hmm. A&M for me. I mean, Tennessee had no business being this big a favorite. Uh, so A&M, injuries and all uh, for me. What were you looking at here? First of all, it's good to see you. I figured you'd be at Game 7 down at Sunrise, and, you know, that was actually – got to pay off that bet because I had the yes, and you're here with me, so that'll be fun. People watching no. will hopefully enjoy the next two hours before it gets to the third period, and Marenzi and Cam late on Sports Rage. Um, I couldn't believe this number either in the college baseball. I, I thought it would be a lot lower. The game three, both – teams have used a lot of pitchers. I mean, this is one of those situations where it'd be like, okay, I cannot believe that those college world series odds minus two sixty, plus one ninety six. That's a big gap. Again, you guys are doing a great mm. job with these things. I don't know how you lay two sixty in a single game elimination with a lot of things that I am just not sure of. So I'm with you. Uh I hope the game has juice. Mm -hmm. The total goes over. There's a lot of people that I know that are on it. That's the position. This will be fun to watch until we get to game seven. Anything. 
Game seven, anything, sign me up. Basketball, yeah. good. Baseball, real good. Hockey, great. I can't yeah. wait to watch this game. And I'm surprised by this line too, Joe. Yeah. Oilers favor? What? Yeah. Like it flipped yeah. in Vegas. It's been flipping back and forth. And it's just one of those cases where I think people now want to see the story. And people like to bet the story. And the story is yep. Edmonton, after being down 3-0, comes back to tie at 3-0. They didn't win it, and Florida didn't blow it yet. Like, mm. it's all inconsequential if they do what the Heat did last year, right? The Heat had a 3-0 lead to the Celtics, let them tie it, but they won it. Everybody forgot about it, that, that series went. What you can't forget about is the goal score. The first goal score, I don't know. Again, Joe, the Florida guys, like, you you see this list? You want to try to pick mm. one? How about one of these guys on the list for the Panthers score? Any yeah. of them? Probably going to be Bobrovsky. Uh, I have uh, – <laughs> I, 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 is he even on that Skinner list? I don't know. He should be there. Game. Yeah. Did you see that? Skinner uh, got an assist on yeah, the empty net. He did. He absolutely, he abs and that's kind of uh, what you'd be looking at uh, here too. Is uh, the Guardians just hit a home run to go up three two over Hello. Uh, the Orioles in Camden Yards? There, uh, I think a lot of how you approach this game has to be on whether or not you think this thing is going over. Uh, and if you think it's going over. And, and obviously the market doesn't because uh, looking at a minus 150 to the under, Dave, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but I guess the records all indicate that game sevens over the last decade or two decades, yep. uh, mm -hmm. they're not uh, they're not great for over. So uh, no. if that is the case, then I'm feeling really good about the usual here with the first period under uh, thinking that uh, maybe we don't get a goal in the yeah. first period this time. It's certainly been profitable all uh, playoff season long, not just this series here, uh, which would also force me to believe that maybe we don't get a goal in the first 10 minutes. I got to believe the defenses uh, are going to come out. And really, I guess the big adjustment here is what does, what, what does Florida do to slow down the speed of the Oilers like they did in the first three games? Uh, and can they eliminate that early mistake? Because it feels like these last three games, they made early mistakes that the Oilers were able to capitalize. The Panthers did it in the first three games of the series. The Oilers have done it in the last three. Uh, what happens if neither team makes that stupid boneheaded mistake? Uh, right. Does that mean, well, we're looking at a 2-1, 3-1 kind of game? I, I can't bet the over as much as I want to. I can't do it here, Dave. Yeah, I can't either. And mm -mm. if there's an early goal scored in the first five minutes, okay, say, I mean, that price to, to no goal in the first five minutes is absurd on the no. But if you don't want that, but you think there's going to be a goal scored in the first five minutes, obviously take the plus. But what will happen is if a goal is scored, it'll go to six and a half in game. And that's yeah. where the strength of like watching the show and watching the lines move. You'll be able to get a better number if you like under without all that juice. So you gamble that there yeah. is going to be a goal or there isn't going to be a goal in the first five minutes. That's a, that's a fun bet that immediately pays off. And, you know, I mean, I, I got three kids all under the age of 20 and the attention span is, is not long for, for the young kids. And that's fine, but this bet will mm -hmm. pay off. I don't think the first five minutes is going to dictate exactly what we're going to see throughout the game. Now, if you look at the numbers, it's an interesting discussion. And guys, great job with the graphics tonight. The goal scored in the first 10 minutes, the yes is the favorite. So yeah, I don't know how a lot of times an odds maker or, or a book can come to some sort of number for each minute. You go from minus 260 on the no to minus on the top on the yes. Um, I think if a goal is going to be scored, the better bet there is the goal scored in the first 10 minutes. Yes. And mm. not as much juice. Yep. If you think that's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what we saw. The adjustment for Florida, ultimately, to answer your question, they got to score first, Joe. I, I feel like they have to score first and play much better downhill. 
you know, with a lead than coming back because they keep waiting. Yeah. Now, this was a pattern that happened in the Rangers series. They were able to overcome. It, it happened in early in this series. They're still able to overcome. They haven't been able to fix that. Tonight, in-game, yep. which team do you think would you bet on down one nothing? I don't even think it's a question. Yeah, it – I, I still uh, – it's not the first goal um, that, that worries me. I mean, Florida can get down one nothing. I'm not worried about it. It's the – giving. it's not tying it up and giving up that second goal in the second period where that's when the doubt will start to creep in, I think, uh, for the Florida Panthers. So as long as this thing is within one goal – uh, heading You're into okay. the third, okay. I think they're good to go. Uh, I don't you, – the problem is going to be as if they – once again, have to head into the third period, and they're down multiple goals. That's when, uh, that's when the issues uh, will arise here. But uh, hey, listen, even nothing, nothing, uh, I think is uh, is a win the for win. Florida, and they can build it Absolutely. up from there. Yeah, it, it really yeah. is. Uh, Got to keep this thing within one goal, I think. And uh, of course, if they are the ones to score first, uh, I do think that uh, the confidence uh, will show at that particular point. Because that really is who comes out swinging first. Who lands the first big shot? We'll come back and join us. Puck is getting ready to drop here. In-game live prime time on the grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory McIlroy, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage, sometimes it's emotional, it's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live. Prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Jeremy Ari alongside Dave Sharapan as we get ready for Game 7. Nothing quite like it here uh, in the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. Edmonton taking on the Panthers here. We're a couple minutes away from that. Uh, the line has gone uh, back and forth. Ton of money towards the under here, but... Uh, they're obviously not going to move it, though. Minus 150, 155 to the under five and a half. Uh, even here in uh, Florida, Dave, at uh, the book, we're looking at minus 110 on both sides here. And that doesn't shock me 
uh, at <laughs> all here. Uh, the tie is not a bad look again, although uh, we've gone six games without one. Uh, but the draw hovering around plus 320 is not a bad look. Uh, if you think a game seven should play out like most game sevens usually do, a little bit tighter, a little bit closer, hence why the total is minus 150, 155 here, Dave, as I don't think either team is going to take a whole lot of unnecessary chances early. I think they'll opt to play it safe and just kind of make sure the other team doesn't get off quickly, uh, and that yeah. all leads towards unders when we're all said and done here. It should. Mm. And as a fan, as somebody who, you know, has the under and is hoping that it's another, you know how these things go, right? It yeah. never goes the way we want it to go as a fan. It never goes the way we want it to go for a yep. game seven. I hope it does. I hope we're sitting here and, you know, we got Sammy on high alert with the goal horn ready to, ready to go for, for every goal. And now we were on earlier in the uh, series, and there was all those goals scored. It was like, uh, 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 and I don't think we're going to hear many of those tonight. The draw is interesting, but you get a plus on either team in the regulation mm. bet. A lot of times it's, I mean, do you want to lay 110 or do you want to take 140 with the Oilers? Do you want to lay 110 right. or take 145 with the Panthers? Worth a look if you Overtime is not part of your handicap, which again, it's over six. That doesn't mean that it's not going to happen, but correct. It's it's not as likely to happen. I, I just don't think mm -mm. we're going to see. We're if, if teams down third period. I mean, Florida's pulling a goalie with five minutes to go, four minutes to go. Like they're not waiting until under two minutes. Edmonton a little probably uh, a little more conservative in that regard so i i hope you get your overtime bet you've been sticking with it you've been telling it and saying it right. plus 320 makes up for three games that's great it's worth a shot in a game seven but uh it's, it's a, there is a oh. very uh public side in this game here tonight as it turns out and uh, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that likes Florida in this spot as the public seems to be all over Edmonton here, but yet still 110 kind of on both sides here. It's uh, it's going to be a pick em price. So uh, that line has been drawn in the sand. It is extremely difficult to win a game seven. It's extremely difficult to beat a team four times in a row. Uh, hmm. There's a lot of uh, forces at play here, but ultimately – Quite honestly, isn't Game Seven's always a coin flip anyway? Uh, I, I mean, it's most. It's always flip it. Uh, no matter what you had seen the first six games, anything can happen in a Game Seven. So, quite yeah. honestly, either way, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I really wouldn't. But the Panthers no. are, isn't this why you have home ice? Isn't, isn't this the whole point of having home ice in case you got to go to a Game Seven? Last three game sevens in the NHL, the, the dog won, the road team won. Yep. So yep. I, you would think yes, but a lot of times, sometimes that's more pressure. And mm. you watch it and, and you feel it. You were in the building. I mean, you were in the building on game five. When they got down, yes. Joe, you, you talked about like, I mean, and I could feel it through the television. First period, second period, it was like, Ah, we, we, we just can't get going. Mm -hmm. We can't get. They played that third period in Game Five with reckless abandon. They got to start yes. like that, right? Like they mm -hmm. they, they cannot yep. get down. And this is hyped up, though. This is really it's it's fun to it's fun to see. I I got the game on. I also just saw that Cincinnati's taking a four one lead against the Pirates. I want to talk about how like you see Skeen's pitch yesterday, right? He was great. Mm -hmm. Eight K's, K prop over again. They don't win the game. Tonight, Zeno told me last night here on In Game Live, the game's is after. Is that Alanis Morissette? It is. The game's after. It's... He pitches, by the way. Wow. <laughs> mm. Pirates lose. So he goes seven innings, eight K's, cruises, 
and the Pirates lose seven out of eight times that uh, that's happened after his starts, something like that. They're seven and one. The opponent is. So if you got the Reds, congratulations. It's four one, and I don't want to say no, it's done, five, but one. it's probably done. Yeah, so we no, got to focus. It's five on one. Yeah. yeah, there's, there's five, the love. Uh, it's five one now. Yeah, yeah. They did get it out though, so that's always a good thing here. But uh, they've been battling around here. Uh, the Reds in this inning off of uh, Falter, who for some reason is still in this game. Uh, but uh, there is uh, a tie game in Tampa, though, 1-1 with uh, Seattle and Tampa. We had the Guardians hit a uh, home run. Uh, I believe Ramirez hit the home run. 3-2 right now. Guardians on top of Baltimore at Camden. And it looks like the uh, the Red Sox uh, with a home run, too. Also up 2-1 sure. over Toronto. Uh, sure. which is exciting. I was looking forward to that, I think. Uh, <laughs> I just can't believe that's Alanis Morissette. Uh, I really, I'm, I, God, I haven't seen her, and right. it feels like forever, right? I, I'm still yeah, trying well, to figure I mean, out her connection. It's June. Is she Canadian? It's Florida. I, I, I don't know. I Maybe, yes. I it, may. Who knows? Is she singing Let's, the Canadian anthem or the, or the United States anthem? That's the question. No, I believe it's. She yeah, might be singing "Oh Canada," is right. oh then she's yeah. Canadian. All right, then you can just get her off the ice. Uh, let's just move her along. Uh, let's go. We got uh, we got a puck to drop here. We got a game to start here. Uh, she has got to be Canadian. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't think they'd open up with the anthem here. So, all right, in game live prime time. Get ready. Puck drops next. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, They're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage, sometimes it's emotional, it's a great watch. We know we also love... The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live Prime Time here as uh, the puck is getting ready to drop in Sunrise, Florida, Game 7 of the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, the winner of this game will, in fact, get their name etched in in history. Uh, and uh, so far, no score, which I think is a good thing here as we welcome in uh, George Kurtz uh, to the house. And Kurtz, uh, puck has dropped after what felt like a 90-minute rendition of both anthems. Uh, but we uh, we are underway. And how are you uh, approaching this all-important Game 7 here tonight? Yeah, I'm on. Listen, 
I said this. I I have a Florida game seven ticket, so I guess I'm rooting for Florida, or I was rooting for Florida, but uh, I'm on Edmonton to win the game. I mean, they playing so much better. Not only have they won three in a row, they probably should have won game one, right? They lost that game because Bobrovsky stole it, uh, which happens in the NHL. We see goaltenders steal games all the time here. Uh, even in game two, right? Uh, Florida, they scored three goals in that five-minute span. And I hate stats like that. Uh, oh, you take away that five minutes or so, you know, if Everton wins. Well, you know, you can, you can play that with any game in any sport, right? Always drives me insane. But still, you know, you take those five minutes away, and that's a, you know, could be a win for Everton as well. I don't know what Bobrovsky's going to play, how he's going to play tonight. I think he's a little rattled, a little shaken here. I think it's taken Florida too long to find their game in almost every game, right? It seems like it's a period, period, the third period and a half before we see the true Florida team. And I'll tell you one thing tonight. I think Florida has to score first to win. But that being said, I think everything's playing too well. Skinner's playing well. McDavid, best player in maybe ever at this point. I, I It's just in a one game, hard for me to see uh, Florida beating uh, – I'll be getting to tonight. So pregame on Edmonton on the over. Okay. Over mm. for the game script. You'll be against everybody. I mean, this number's out of control to the under. Do we see a goal Ooh. in the first period, George? More than one, one, or none? Because that's the total one and a half. And Joe's been on under in the first period. Goal in the first 10 minutes is actually. Mm. favor to the over what do you think about how this plays out right now we're watching it live over under first period i think it's under first period i think if we're going to get goals okay. it's going to be the third mm. period when we get the empty net okay. you know if one team's down you know they're going to pull that goalie and we can make it empty net goes up the wazoo that's what uh, for my over i think that's what i'm going to need i don't think it's going to be a six five game you know i think this could be something like oh, mm. three one going into a third period something like that and then we get our empty net goals and away we go uh, as far as my over is mm. concerned here. So I think it's going to be a lot lower scoring game. I don't think we're going to get a lot of penalties or a lot of power plays, right? I think the refs, I don't want to say you got to commit bloody murder, but probably, uh, you know, second degree to get, a, wow. to get a call in this game. They're going to want the players to play. So just don't do anything well, stupid. They, I think they'll they even penalties They off. just got a call. <laughs> they just got a they call, call Kurt, So they, uh, yeah, Edmonton is uh, heading to the penalty box here. So this will be a uh, power play for uh, Florida. Uh, wow. two minutes in, so I right off see the, the beginning of that, there, man, uh, but that did not look that didn't look like a sticky. great call. That did not look maybe I stick. Season, if you hit him in the head, that's going to get called. That is the bloody murder thing. You can't yeah. high stick someone, it's an automatic, the director always doesn't have a choice. But I like to see that again because I saw the very end of it. I think it, it, it got him under bad. the chin. You I think it got him under the chin. Player get his high sticking yeah. penalty called in the slot of the net that he's shooting on, right? You very rarely right. see that. This might be one of those, George, you've officiated, I've officiated, knowing everybody's pretty excited and on the edge of, you know, all of your dreams, you ever dream about playing hockey in a game seven, you're here. Hey, boys, we better keep the sticks down tonight. Mm. I'm going to call this one. I was with you. I said this is going to have to be commit a felony to go to get a two minute minor. This bodes well for the over, uh, George. If you mm. get a power play goal here, this would be good, right? I think once again, uh, refereeing. If what you're looking at here is there are certain penalties, your hand goes up and you can't stop it. And stick one is mm. that same is one of those penalties, right? Because it just goes up. All right, you're calling because you, you hit mm -hmm. somebody in the face, hit somebody, in the, and, you, and you see, you don't even think about it here. When I ref, I, I always told myself I didn't want to call a penalty unless it was so obvious I had no choice. I didn't, I didn't want to be a part of the game, and also because I wanted to get the hell out of there. All right, the more penalties you call, the longer the game is. Uh, so that's just the way right. I, uh, I refed here. And I got to think a game. I, well, by the way, I wish more refs throughout all sports would do that, especially football. If it's not bloody murder, don't call the penalty here. So, but, but I got to think that's what they want. Right. They don't want a million power plays here. That's not what the NHL wants here. Let the, uh, let the players decide who wins this game. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, all off and uh, off and running. Got about sixty seconds left on the power play here, so we'll see uh, what goes on. But so far, good for the under. Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, much more hockey still to go. A lot of baseball happening right now too. We'll get you caught up on that next year on the.
anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live prime time. And guess what we got? Yeah, that would be a goal. And we got a, uh, a big goal right out of the game here. We're about uh, five minutes into it as the Panthers uh, have struck first there, right towards the end of that power play. A fantastic. Tip in from Verhage um, uh, on a shot towards Skinner. Uh, it was a beautiful tip, and right between the uh, right between the legs there of Skinner, uh, we got a we got a goal here. Kurtz, three shots to two shots. Um, that's exactly what Florida needed right off the bat, mm. and that's a goal to score in the first five minutes uh, yeah. as well. The cash uh, at plus two ten. So boom. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Kurtz could not have been a better start so far for the Panthers. Uh, you said it. I, I thought, I thought other two teams, Florida except had that they to gave up first. a goal here now. Yeah, except they just tied it up. So, so, so the overs looking Another good. Another breakaway, here, man. How does this keep happening? Uh, no idea. No idea. How does it? It's amazing. And we're not talking about David here. This is Jean Marc. Who got behind it? I mean, yeah. how are these guys yep. getting behind your defense? This is not that hard, boys and girls. Yeah. The last defender stays behind nope. be, behind the last offender. It's, it's just that's what you do. But over and over yep. again, they've had so many yep. ways. They've had more breakaways in the Stanley yep. Cup playoffs than the regular. It's just amazing here. Uh, nice goal. No too. sense. Out, uh, what a goal. Yeah. What a goal. Yeah. But why is he? Why is he behind anybody? Seriously, like, why? Yeah. How does that happen? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You just killed it. Nope. All the momentum you just, can't you just killed. killed it. I think yep. my over, but killed it. What this is nope. good. This is a really good start for the over, George. You get two goals in the first six minutes of the game. One, look yep. at the pass. The pass is ridiculous. How he's not supposed to get behind him like that. Uh, no, it, and, it, and that's Ekblad. Like seriously, oh, like geez, that went <laughs> off of Bobrovsky too. Another yeah, one. Yeah, he got a piece like, of it. He did. He got a piece. Yeah, of he it, did. But, yep. Breakaway after yep. you score a goal. What do you think's going on inside? The, there mm -hmm. it is. Both teams to score in the first period was plus two twenty. All these plus prices yep. are coming in. Hopefully, people are enjoying that. Um, yeah. Thought process right now for Florida. Like, okay, we let our guard down. There has to be some sense of doubt now, right? If you're, if you're George, 
if you're in the building and you're holding a Florida ticket or you're wearing a Florida jersey or you're rooting for Florida, you got to be going, not again, right? Like, that's the first thought I just thought. when they, As soon as I heard the goal horn, I thought, not again. I mean, I'm sure, once again, Maurice can tell everybody, well, we need to score more than one goal anyway, so it didn't matter. That's what you're going to mm-hmm. say. But we all know this is a killer. You scored the first goal. You're, oh, everything, you're, it's in your building. The fans are going wild here. And then you give it back up on a – you're a good defensive team. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like I said, we're not talking about McDavid yeah. getting behind you. Okay, you know, it's McJesus. He's, he's great. What are you going to do? It happens. But this has happened over and over and over again in these yeah. finals where yeah. somebody keeps getting behind yeah. these. This defense, I don't get it. I played defense for a long time. You know, and I was a defensive defender. You, you know to stay behind. Yeah. You, know, you, see, you know where the last guy is, you stay behind him. It's, that's definitely it. So you don't have to worry about it. it. It happens every now and then. I'm not saying it's, it should never happen, but it shouldn't happen eight times, I think, so far in the series. That's right. nuts. Yeah. You don't see that during the regular season, yeah. more or less the Stanley Cup final. And as Dave said, we're talking yeah. to Aaron Eckblad here, one of the better defenders in the game. So uh, if I'm Maurice, and you know he's gone over this a thousand times over the last, what, week, 10 days, you know, hey, make sure no one gets behind you. Make sure no one gets and It just keeps happening mm-hmm. over and over again. This is the equivalent of a, a football, your free safety who keeps – Biting on the play fake, yep. right? And then there, yeah, there goes Tommy yep. Kill going behind you every time. Yep. You have a long bomb. Yep. Just, it just, I like to say it just can't keep happening, yep. but apparently it can. Yeah, well, and, it, and you know, Ekblad's making entirely too much money uh, to look like he's so lost out there where he gets burned once again. Can't have five guys across the blue line and they'd be like, oh, I can't believe there's somebody behind me. Of course there's somebody behind you. Uh, it absolutely smokes you. So, one one, but the Panthers, uh, you know, two ways to look at it here. They uh, have dominated the puck since that last goal, so maybe that uh, maybe that's what they needed uh, to wake up a little bit. But the reality is, hey, listen, eleven minutes to go here in the first period. This is the, uh, you know, you, you don't want to give up that goal, but you're not losing either. So I'm a, I'm a big believer, Kurtz, that as long as they're tied uh, heading into the third, it, it's it's advantage Florida uh, if that's in do it. As long as they're not down a goal or two goals when it comes back, that I think that's when the doubt creeps in. Uh, but great for the over because we still need a couple of more goals here. So are we going to get now that we got two goals in the first? Uh, is this going to be a slow down in the second, you think? Or when do you think the bulk of the goals come from? I mean, right now, uh, as soon as I'm off, I'm looking at the uh, – taking the end game over. I imagine it's six and a half right now. I think I'm going to go in on that. Six right? and a half, this, yep. Yeah, yep. this looks to be pretty much a, yep. a, a wider open game than I expected here. Now, Florida, from what we've seen, has yeah. dominated, right? So maybe they have found their game early. And sort of what you said, all right, you make one mistake, Everton buried it. Fine. But we're dominating yep. the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, the problem for Florida has yep. been it's taken them too long to find their game. Right? Usually it's somewhere in the second period where they have found it, where everything's controlled the first period. Right. Today it looks like to be the reverse, but everything's scored on their one chance here. So that definitely bodes well for Florida here. So I'm kind of uh, right now I'm sort of digging uh, the six and a half, where I think I'm going to play that as well. George, let's change the subject for a minute mm. while they're playing this game. Um, Yankees, big news yesterday. Uh, Stanton goes on the How's IL. How's the big news? We all knew it was happening. That's not big when? news. You didn't win. Who had the over-under yeah. on less than July 1st? You win. You win. Yep. Cashman yep. said it during the offseason. Injuries are part of his game. Then he tried to backtrack it. You were right, Cashman. I don't know why he backtracked. He goes, his agent got mad. But that's what no. I mean, the, all the man does is a heavy jog. If you watch United, this is all he does is jog. Uh, that's not being sarcastic. That's not a joke. He does a heavy jog as his top speed, and he still... Yep. Hurts uh, into the hamstring where he's gone now a month here. <laughs> As a uh, this Yankee roster construction is a joke. Absolute joke. Rizzo's out, right? He was terrible anyway. LeMayhew, you know, Cashman, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, well, are you yep. surprised that Stanton got hurt? Are you surprised that Rizzo sucked? Rizzo sucked last year. Are you surprised LeMayhew sucked? LeMayhew sucked last year. It's like, they, it's like they're so yep. shocked where, wow, they were bad last year and they're bad this year too. I can't believe that. Yeah, amazing. Uh, you know, and, yeah. uh, yeah. I'm not happy. No. Take unders. Take I, I, unders with Yankee games, boys and girls. Unders. And they're against the Mets. They're play, they, so the, the the Subway Series starts tomorrow. They play the Mets. The Mets yeah. are the hottest the team in baseball. The Yankees can't hit left-handers. That's why the Mets did that Severino yes. move, by the way. They put Severino last night because they want to throw Peterson against the Yankees because the Yankees' record against left-handers is god-awful. All right, that's why they did that yep. move here. So the Mets are playing a little uh, – 
playing a little strategy here, throwing a lot of back-to-back lefties against the Yankees. Granted, it's Peterson and Manaya, you know, for whatever that's right. We're not talking about great uh, lefties. We're not talking about Max Fried here. But that's why the Mets did what they did here. They're throwing two lefties against the Yankees. Yankees are going with Cole, and they better hope that he'll – that uh, last, thir- uh, last Thursday against Baltimore was just an aberration here. So we'll see. But I'm thinking a couple of low-scoring games here in the Subway Series. Uh, Guardians up 3-2 here on the Orioles. Uh, I mean, since the Orioles uh, spanked the Yankees last Thursday for 17 runs, hasn't gone great. Uh, They got swept by uh, Houston. They're back home. But this team looks like a team, Kurtz, that has only had one day off the entire month because that's all they've had. They're they're starting to look like a team that's uh, maybe a little tired here, a little winded at this point. Uh, and the Guardians are trying to uh, trying to finish them off here tonight, three two. Who did you like in this one? I like Cleveland only because of uh, I mean, come on, Suarez, Baltimore. They're I think they're this close to being the best team in the American League by far. Mm. But they, you have to go out and get pitching. You're not going to win with Suarez, mm. Irvin. I mean, you're not. Love uh, Burns, Rodriguez, mm. fine, but you need you need two starting pitchers, and you're there. I think you're there with Philadelphia. You're there with the, uh, the Dodgers here. But until then, you're going to play a lot of course field games, 10-9 games. You ain't got the pitching. Yep. And, uh, you know, the other teams probably don't have it either. They need pitching at the deadline. Yep. Yes. Uh, well, there's a guy on display tonight coming up, Crochet for the White Sox, taking on the Dodgers. Uh, exhibition or audition maybe for one of these <laughs> teams. We'll see how that works. Kurtz. Enjoy the game, my friend. In game live prime time will continue here on the grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. you got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live primetime here in game uh, right now with uh, game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. A uh, couple of quick goals uh, within a couple of minutes of one another has well, it's jacked this total up to six and a half in game. Those that were looking at maybe the under, but were like, I am absolutely not laying a buck fifty, a buck fifty five on a five and a half under. Well, it's six and a half right now, minus one twenty five. So you have an opportunity if you think uh things may 
settle down here a little bit. Nine total shots in the game, five for Florida, four uh, for Edmonton. They got about uh, about six minutes to go here. Uh, they Both teams have had some chances here. Both teams uh, converted when given the opportunity, uh, but uh, six and a half seems like a little much. If you didn't want the five and a half because you didn't like the 150 55 well you can get six and a half now for a little less uh i tend to think that maybe this is going to slow down a little bit here and it this will be a one goal game by the time we get to the uh, third period if it's not tied here so uh the energy and the effort is there for both teams and really that's kind of what you want that's not so much a it's not so much we were worried about Edmonton doing that, Dave. We were a lot more worried that uh, the Florida would be sleepwalking uh, at the start of this game. But that is not the case here in a 1-1 spot. Uh, Edmonton did hit the post, by the way, on another uh, yep. attempt. So both teams are getting some shots on uh, only 1-1. But I do think this tends this will slow down a little bit more as this game uh, progresses here. Uh, what are you thinking so far of what you've seen? I, six and a half, Dave. If you didn't like the the juice on five and a half, you can take under six and a half. I think so. That's what we talked about. We we were counting on one yep. early goal to move that number up. We got two, yep. which makes the bet a little more nerve wracking. But now the game has settled into exactly what you would have thought a game seven yep. would have without scoring the goals this looks like a zero zero hockey game with you know unless you have an odd man rush you don't force it there's no turnovers just inside each other's blue lines you make sure the puck gets deep if that means dumping it and chasing it we're going to do that for a little while um the physicality looks like it picked up a little bit but yep yep the the space it's getting tight out there. I feel like, you know, we used to say when we were playing, you feel like you're in a phone booth. It's getting it's getting hard to find space. Two passes completed is like the most uh, you're seeing completed. No, there's no tic-tac-toe, three, three passes in a row. Um, yep. This is good, man. This is, this, this is so far, I don't want to say it, but it's living up to the billing. This is exactly what I wanted. Yep. Close game, good goaltending so far. The door got open with the penalty. I, I don't think there's going to be too many other penalties now. Yep. Everybody's going, That's all correct. right, we're good. We're, we're, let's Edmonton yep. at this point is going, all right, we gave up the first goal, but we tied it. Let's get out of here tied. I think yep. Florida can just breathe and go, okay, yeah. we're at home. Yep. We're not trailing. Yep. We were up. We're not. Let's 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 play smart. Yep. Let's let's just keep extending this game. I love it. it. This is the first lead that Florida's had since Game Three. Saw that graphic. There hasn't been a lot of lead changes in the last few games, nope. right? Edmonton lead and went ahead. I love it. We're, let's settle in, yep. Joe. Uh, let, let's get this. Would you sign right now for one one all the way to get your overtime bet? To me, that was the uh, that was what we wanted. That was the game script that you know keep this game tied or within one goal uh, and heading into the third, and you've given yourself a chance. Uh, but you know the problem would have been that uh, if they would have given up back to back goals uh, uh, and been down to nothing at this particular point, which is what has happened in both these last couple of games. So uh, the fact that they uh, they hit first and even though it was there was uh, no time left on the penalty kill, for the most part, you know, they scored that goal, as far as I'm concerned, during a penalty. Uh, so it was their first, uh, it feels like their first goal in forever uh, with a man advantage here against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, but, uh, hey, the bottom line is you got five minutes left here in the first. You got plenty of time. Uh, coming up here, uh, two more periods to go. I, it's back down to five and a half, by the way. So that didn't last long. Uh, I'm still saying even money on both sides for the most part kind of feels exactly uh, that way here. You're going to uh, – and even when the next goal is scored, I don't think it's going to happen here, Dave, until the second. Uh, and I think both defenses are starting to settle in right now. This could very well be a – 
three, two, two, one kind of game. So the fact that we got six and a half, I'm feeling pretty good about that right now. Yeah. Right. I mean, in the five and, and one half, more goal, it'll go back to it. One more correct. goal, it'll go back to six and a half, too. Yep. Five and a half right now, the book I'm looking at has plus one ten. So you could get a plus Ooh. 110 on the same number that it was pregame, minus 150 or 160. So, again, we're always trying to shop for the best numbers. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I just peeked in at the college baseball game. It's 3-1 Tennessee, bottom of five. So yeah. they're leading. That's uh, not good for the guys that are uh, the Aggie. Yeah, and the Pirates, um, it's 7-3. I have to stop looking. Yeah. I I, I, I yeah. just, I, I just have to stop. I was hoping good. they were going to come back. They don't win the game after Skeen's pitches. Again, thanks to Zeno for that. Guardians lead 3-2 against the Orioles. That's a good score for baseball as far as I'm concerned. Um, Dodgers, White Sox, did you did you think that, like, George is on us up with the crochet and all this other stuff? The, the White Sox live tonight? Like, that's the bargain basement cheapest price on the Dodgers all season against a really bad yeah. baseball team. I was surprised yep. by that. You no? know the routine. Oh, Fetty and uh, Crochet, first five bets. Just just first blindly five. take, doesn't make a difference where they're going. First five, and I think they're even minus 120, minus 125 Chicago in the first yeah. five at home. So, uh I don't think uh, I don't think they're surprised by that the books anymore here, but it's really the only way I would play that one there. An update from the Stanley Cup next on the grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. You know what we also love? The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line, only on Sports Grid. And the puck is bouncing all over the place here. But uh, still 1-1 right now as Edmonton yep. and the Florida Panthers in a game seven of the Stanley Cup finals here. Who will it be? A couple of quick goals early, one by Florida, one by Edmonton. Uh, and this is where we're at. Both teams seem to have settled in defensively here. Knotted up six shots apiece here, Dave. Uh, yep. Five and a half back in play here as the total. Both teams pretty much even on both sides, which is where we were to begin with. 
Uh, and uh, off and running. I, th- I thought we'd have a few more games like this in this series, but really uh, they were a, a little bit more one-sided, the first three as well as the second three. So uh, yeah. I thought we'd have a lot more periods like this, Dave, than what we have had so far in this uh, this first six games. Very balanced uh, after the early goals. Yeah. Well, everything's very balanced. Yep. Um, the quality of the ice in Florida has been discussed versus the quality of the ice in Edmonton, which causes the puck to be bouncy, and nobody likes yes. a bouncy puck, you know, especially in the playoffs. It like, sweats, you know, it's, right? That's it. I think it, the ice sweats, yeah, right? It, it, it sweats. It, it, sometimes it's, it will stick on the ice mm. when it's not right. So, oh, it's yeah, terrible. The, the quality right now is good. It, it, it's really yeah. This has been a really good Other than well that, it's fine. Period. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. good to go. It's fine. Six, six. It, it, it's looking Shots, good. You said, yep. that's even. Um, we're, we're close to a minute uh, left in the period. This is a yep. win-win for both sides. This is a win-win for both sides, yes. and it's a win-win if you have the under six and a half. I don't think this opens yes. up, right? This doesn't just in a second period yeah. go where we've had like – it's been first period under, well, second period over. You know, Peralta's correct. been on that every game. It's worked. It's already over in the first period. I would say it stays more like this. Might want to look at second period under if you're watching right yes. now. Yes. I, there's not yeah. going to be and any to Chuck power with play. A, right? Chuck oh, had a good he, opportunity there oh. and just went over his shoulder. Yeah, really yeah. good. Uh, lifted it a little too much. Uh, yeah. But 1-1, one, one, still six shots apiece. Under a minute to go here. Florida has been um, pretty much after, after again, giving Edmonton a breakaway goal. Uh, they have uh, they have pretty much clamped down on that and done a, uh, a pretty good job here. And uh, the question is, can they add to this or go into the break, not it up one apiece? I would think if you ask Paul Maurice at the break going, uh, hey, if this is 1-1, one, one, is that what you would have expected? I, I think anybody would have said, yeah, that's good. Uh, well, you know, to being tied at the end of one, still got two periods left to go, uh, and that's uh, that's a good thing if you're uh, Florida. So far, so good. Where is Connor McDavid? Have you, again, he didn't have a shot in the last it? goal. I don't think he had a shot in this uh, first uh, first period so far. I know. It's so funny. I was just thinking that, too. Um, Edmonton has gotten such good production from thirds and fourth lines, and and that's why yes. they came back in the series. They got the secondary scoring. Yes. But David did it in game five. Um, everybody did it in game four. I mean, everybody scored. But game six, he was held without a shot. Didn't have a shot. No point, yeah. no shot, no nothing. And the longer this game goes – and it's like this. All right, there it is. End of the first period. It's tied 1-1. So let me check yep. McDavid's stats. Uh, he does not. Wow. I don't think he's got a shot. He blocked a shot, but he does not have yes. a shot. He does not have a shot on goal. He is second on the team in minutes played. So, yeah. wow, okay. A defenseman. CeCe. Has the most Which minutes. Is he has the most minutes played for the forward. Yeah. Hasn't done anything. Wow. There's a good stat. I just saw a flash across the screen. 52% of his game sevens are decided by one goal. Joe, how about plus yep. a goal and a half right now? I know. It's uh plus a goal and a half, minus four hundred though. So what are you oh. what do you think? What are they telling? Oh. Yeah, that's wow. a uh oh. that's a pretty big wow. number right now. A uh, very, very big number. But this is what a Game 7 uh, should be, right? This is what we thought yeah. we would get. This is exactly uh, where we're heading it's right now. We also have an update. This, right? It's probably going to bounce yeah, well, it, it really, Yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. We can do that. 1-1 uh, one, one there. We'll, we'll have more on, uh, of course, getting ready for the second period coming up. Updating the College World Series as well as a few of these Major League Baseball games. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you all caught up with what you need to know is in-game live prime time. Bounces on its way right to another hour coming up here on the grid. <laughs>
anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. you got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in uh, in in-game live primetime here, off and running another hour on the Sports Grid Network. Joe Ranieri alongside uh, our man, Dave Sherapan, who's wearing his Oilers gear, despite the fact that he knows I'm on the Panthers here. 1-1 at the intermission here. Great first period, but we basically start uh, the second period with exactly the way we started the first here, knotted up at one apiece here. So. Uh, we've got uh, about a 15 minute break here before they begin the second period. We'll have you covered there. Uh, mm. Also, College World Series, another final. Uh, this is it. Game three, knotted up at one apiece. A and M, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee had to go to the bullpen again now as A and M has mm-hmm. first and second, uh, top of the six, just one out. It's a three-one game. This one too, mm. Dave, could be. Coming down to the uh, ninth inning here, maybe even a little extra baseball. Uh, it is uh, it is good there. And the wind, ironically enough, has been blowing in. So we're not getting the same kind of home runs that we have gotten in previous games here. But it's all mm. hands on deck in a final game. They, uh, If you can pitch uh, and you actually have a glove and your you number ready. is on it, you are available to throw. <laughs> You are available yep. to throw in this game no matter what since there is no uh, tomorrow. Your uh, – yep. well, we don't do – you want to talk about your your Pirates are getting crushed oh. here, 7-3. Uh, Toronto oh. has figured out how to hit uh, and a wasted outing by uh, Tanner Houck there. 6-2 Toronto on top of the Red Ooh. Sox here. Uh, the bullpen for Tampa once again uh, gives oh. up a two-run home run in the seventh uh, to Seattle. 3-1 there. And I, I kind of think now might be the time to jump in on Baltimore, Dave. It is 3-2, top of the ninth, yep. but Class A is not available. He pitched the last two games. As a matter of fact, all their leverage guys have pretty much pitched the yep. last two games of the weekend. So I, it's 3-2. If they go to the bottom of the ninth, 3-2, and you're not going to have the closers – Maybe it's worth a shot at home for Baltimore at uh, at plus five fifty, plus six hundred. That would be great, um, but I like oh. Cleveland before the game. I I I want Cleveland. I did too, I, but I but now I would do. It. It's the only reason why I would do it yeah, is you don't have your fine. closers. 
Right. That's that's fine. We can look at that. Mm. Let's bounce over. Let's bounce over to the golf from yesterday. Did you see Scotty Scheffler win again? I mean, we had Cam on. Uh, he's coming on later. I talked to him earlier. Betting against Scotty Scheffler and getting great numbers and great tickets and everything else, the perils of doing so, I can't believe it. This is one of those things. And um, we talked about it today. He, he's he got six tournament wins in 2024. His pre-final round number, you see it right there. Great job with these graphics, boys. Plus 160 pre-final round. I don't know. We're, we're, we're sitting here trying to figure out when a good time to get in and get out of this game is and this and that. Is there a better bet on the weekends than Scotty Scheffler when he's in contention in a tournament, Joe? But apparently, uh, there is. Uh, and we we learned, uh, Scotty uh, Wetzel and I, yesterday that uh, if you uh, would bet the amount of protesters that show up at a golf tournament, I think uh, oh, you had a pretty good prop bet there. Uh, because yeah. that might have been the most uh, unbelievable thing that we saw live yesterday and just could not believe what we were doing. And shout out to uh, law enforcement with just amazing tackles all over the place uh, on that green, on the 18th green. But I have never seen in a golf tournament where they actually had to cut out a new hole in a playoff and never made the sure. hole even more sure. difficult, the 18th hole, because they put the hole near the sand trap, which is exactly where Tom Kim landed yesterday uh, when yeah. they were playing the sudden death 18th hole again because uh, they had to, with all the smoke canisters, move the hole. It damaged the green. Uh, just the, And to win in those conditions, I kind of felt bad for Tom Kim because he made that putt to tie it after all oh. of that craziness, right, with people running all over the place. And then they move the hole, and he misses it and lands in the trap, and it was all he uh, all they wrote for him. But uh, the record, by the way, uh, nine wins in a season by guess who? Uh, uh, VJ Singh also has that record. Uh, but uh, he's got six, and he still has legit, I think they said yesterday, five more tournaments that he'll be in this year. So can he win another three out of five, or dare I say four out of five, and tie Tiger and VJ Singh for nine wins in a golf season? That's just absolute craziness. Because I got news for you. He's probably winning another major, too. Uh, just just saying, he's going to be the favorite going you, across the pond. When you see the numbers, it reminds me of the, the, the peak mm. Tiger and how, yep. as the book you almost felt defenseless because it didn't matter what you made the number. So I, I'll, I'll yeah. never forget one of the last years we did it. Um, Tiger won the Masters, and the book, we didn't lose money. And our director right. was expecting, after we graded it, said, how bad was it? We said, we're fine. We, we, we actually, we broke even, and we meant it. Yep. And he said, how'd you guys do that? We gave away the best prices we could possibly give on golfers. We had the best prices in town on other golfers yep. and tried to keep the Tiger number just as good at market or a little bit worse and kept them off mm. Tiger at our place as much as we could and put them on a lot of other people. I think you'll see that. I think you'll see some interesting prices on, on things that, I don't think anybody's talking about, which leads me to the next thing that I saw and the boys put this together. Is this true that somebody in Minnesota said that the that the they're in, the T Wolves are interested in Bronny in drafting LeBron kid, LeBronny James? 45 and a half is his, his draft position total. And there's gonna be a huge draft special on Wednesday night. Uh, here on Sports Grid, the boys will have this all covered. But Joe, I mean, you pay attention to all kind of stuff. You're on the air all weekend, hours and hours upon hours. Like this can't be right. Like he's going to the Lakers, is he not? This no one's taking him, is it? Are they? Well, the Lakers have the 17th and 55th pick. They ain't, you know, if they use the 17th pick. 
for uh, leverage to sign somebody or to go out and be in play and use it as a package deal, which is possible. Um, that's you know that's Bob. But again, if if you ha- if you know they have the fifty fifth pick. And what was his over under uh, round 45 and a half? Yeah, uh, so it, that leads me to believe that maybe just maybe that 17th pick will be used on guess who there uh, in Bronny James. Listen, anything past that, Dave, the 55th, what you sign it for a ham sandwich and a bowl of soup. So it's not like it, it's, sure. you know, you might as well just not sign and, and go. Money. Nobody's worried oh, about the well, money in any of this. This is we got to play with the kids. It's all about the money. It's all about perception. No, it does serious. have nothing to do. It's about the perception. They're not going to let him go to the fifty-fifth or forty-fifth round. They're not going. Nobody else is drafting him because nobody else is going to waste a pick uh, on a guy that, in all likelihood, can't play in the NBA anyway, and we all know it. Uh, so the Lakers will do whatever they have to do to make sure he is there. And I got news for you. It's probably going to happen late in the first round. Probably going to happen late in the first round. He wants him. He's going to go there. Bronny ain't going anyplace else. Uh, minus 120. That's all you need to know. The only question is, did they use the 17th pick? I think they do. I think they use the 17th pick really? on him. Wow. I really do. I think push okay. comes to shove. They'll do whatever LeBron wants, and he wants his son, who can't play in the NBA. All right, more in game live prime time coming up next. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love... The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live uh, prime time here on the Sports Grid Network as uh, we get ready for the second period uh, puck to drop. 1 1 right now with the Panthers and the Oilers. Game seven in South Florida here. So far, so good. No harm, no foul for both these teams, but in game number is still showing five and a half. Pretty much even money on both sides as we welcome in. Joe Madden uh, to uh, to the program here, who made it out alive from Game Six 
which is uh, nice to see there, uh, Joe. So it's uh, where it was there. It was 50 50. We were a little worried about you, uh, knowing that you were heading out representing Calgary and Edmonton, but you made it back. Uh, and what have you seen so far? And what were you on before all of this started? Yeah, Joe, I made it back, and I have to say the Edmonton fans were absolutely wonderful <laughs> to me, and I'm so glad I got to experience it because it was second to none. I've never been at such an event. But looking at this game today, I take in the Florida Panthers in this series in six or seven games. So I was looking at a hedging position here for the Edmonton Oilers because I love what they've been able to bring to the table, but I just didn't get there. I toyed with it. I put it into my bets and then went to click accept and then never accepted it. I just couldn't get there because I still do think the Florida Panthers are the better team. So I ended up riding with the over five and a half in this one, expecting what we saw in that first period to start in the second. So I'm loving what I'm seeing right now in this first period. The Florida Panthers have come out so physical. 19 to 7 were the hits for Florida Mm -hmm. versus Edmonton. But you look at the Edmonton Oilers, they are winning those face-offs, but they're not playing with the same drive that we saw in four, five, and six. They're not getting it out of their zone. And when they do, that puck's being turned back over in the neutral zone. We're not seeing that fight out of them in this game. Hmm. I heard you say during the break that you got a little soft spot for Edmonton after Mm -hmm. going and experienced that, but you didn't bet them. So that's okay. That's that's how you know you got to, you know, play with your – Money is your bankroll, not with your heart. You can't bet with your heart. Tell people that all the time. So far, all right, you said it has been a pretty good start for the over, but we're back to the original number, five and a half. Mm. Right now, if you could go and redo it, or would you do the same thing, stick with the over five and a half, Joe, or would you go, you know what, this thing actually has a chance of going under? You know what? No, I would still look at the over five and a half. It's minus 108 now pregame that was coming in at plus 128. But I look at that ability in that third period for those empty netters. I think if you want to look at an under, you look at the second period to stay under the one and a half. I think we're going to have that tight defensive battle in one of these periods. And I expect it to be the second because no one's going to pull their goaltender in the second period. We're going to see both of these teams play strong defensively. That third period, if a goaltender is pulled, those abilities for the empty netters are so strong that I just can't get there with this game to go to the under five and a half, especially at minus 118 to the under pregame. It was hugely juiced to the under. Um, But right now I still think the five and a half is in play. 19 to seven, uh, Florida out checking uh, Edmonton in that first, Joe. So you're right. The physicality, they've kind of gone back to it here. And Dave and I checked, uh, no shots on goal, Connor McDavid, last game. No shots on goal so far. And where is Connor McDavid in this year? What, what is going on here? Yeah, you look at Connor McDavid out there, and they are making sure they are shutting him down. If the Florida Panthers can continue to shut him down for the rest of this game, I will be completely blown away, Joe, because I did expect Connor McDavid after that last game to come out just with fire in this one. He wants Mm. the Stanley Cup so phenomenally bad and I still think he has every opportunity to start getting those shots it's just going to take that one breakaway out of Connor McDavid and you can look for that anytime goal I did ladder him for his points tonight I took him for the two plus points that came in at minus 113 but I laddered him up to three plus a plus 285 and you know I had to put a little sprinkle on the five plus because that would mean he tied Wayne Gretzky now at this point it's mm. asking so much. I wouldn't jump on that now, but pregame I had to. I was really hoping it wouldn't be Janmark in the first period scoring that goal. I was hoping for Connor McDavid, <laughs> but we didn't see it happen. Joe, before we get to the baseball and stuff, I wanted to ask you, uh, as you know, someone who really likes the hockey, watches the hockey, bets on the hockey, what do you do after game seven? Like, what what, what can't you wait to do to, like, chill mm. out and relax? Like, after a hockey season, because it's come to reality that we're watching the last hockey game of the season. And okay, are you trying to I make me kind cry? Of bummed out. Like, no, I'm not trying to make you cry, but like, what do you, what do you do? People ask me all the time. I'm like, well, I'm watching baseball, but I don't know. I feel like there is kind of a hole. Like, like, well, there's no game tomorrow to talk about. What, 
What are you looking yeah. forward to? Um, well, you know, those people that are like empty nesters, all of a sudden their kids leave. That's how I feel when the hockey season's over. It's like, what do I do? Where do I go in my house? What am I going to do tonight? And I kind of sit there and, you know, stare at the walls a little bit, but no, I'll have to get out. I'll have to visit friends. I don't have an excuse now. I have to be home watching the game. So maybe I should just work some more. That would probably be. No, no. You got, listen, you barely got three months off before it all the craziness starts again here. So you might as well just enjoy it while you can. It relax. It's good to go. Uh, plus, you got to start breaking down. I've already seen the odds for next year are out 2025 the Stanley Cup champs. Yep. So yep. Uh, we can we can kill a lot of time with that too uh, moving forward, depending on who wins here. Uh, still no goal here, but what was the one game coming up late night that you were looking at in MLB, if anything, Joe? Yeah, both of these late night games, looking at the Cubs and the Giants, I really do think that one is going to go over the total. Looking at the Giants team total over three and a half, I think is a solid way to go at minus 108 here. But the full game over seven and a half looks really good. Justin Steele, while he is strong, I still do think the Giants will be able to hit off of him. And Howard Sp or Spencer Howard, I don't trust here for the Giants not to allow the Cubs to hit off of him. Mm. Wow. Well, we got a power play coming, tripping apparently on Florida. And that yep. was a terrible call, too. So Edmonton hey. will be on the power play, and it's Kachuk of all people there. So, all right, Joe, it buckle up. It's going to be a hell of a finish here. We appreciate it as always. In game live, primetime return. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love... The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live prime time here. Game seven, uh, the Edmonton Oilers right now uh, on a power play in the final 10 seconds or so as uh, it appears that uh, all is clear here that uh, Florida will have uh, killed it. Uh, and uh, we are back to a 1-1 game still here with about 14 minutes ago in the second. We welcome back in. Joe Madden hanging out with us here. And 
Uh, well, that's a good sign if you like Florida, right? Uh, they ended up scoring early. Uh, the game is still tied. They're not losing, and they just killed a power play. So, uh, so far, so good for the Panthers in this one here. Yeah, absolutely is a good sign because Edmonton was able to keep it in Florida's zone at that time, and Bobrovsky came out nice and strong. So I'm mm. happy to see that he has his head on his shoulders in this game. I'm not sure if you were able to tell watching the game in Game 6, the chanting of the Edmonton Oilers fans chanting, Sergey trying to get in and under his skin. Oh. We saw as this game started here um the edmonton fans in the house chanting his name as he was warming up mm. and i tell you they are in his head so hopefully he can keep his head on hand in this one yeah, yeah that's uh that's always the fun of being at the games like you start to really feel the fans know what to do at certain times do you think now watching this game and I, i'm asking because you were in the building for game six at edmonton I don't get that watching this game right now. now. I don't have the sound on, but I don't. I feel like they're more on edge. Like, oh no, like we got to get a goal here soon. Like, I, I feel like there's tension. Through what do you what do you see as far as like that goes with the fans right now? Yeah, I saw the tension to start absolutely as well. The tension going on right now. When I saw them chanting Sergey, that was before this game hit the ice. You could tell with the movement that they were doing because you saw it at home in Edmonton in game six where they're doing that chopping motion with their hands. All the Oiler <laughs> fans at the same time doing it towards him. So I think right now everyone is tense in this building. No one wants to see the other team go up here. I don't think the fans are trying to get under anyone's skin. Maybe they will. Maybe they are. Maybe they will try to when the Edmonton Oilers are in the Florida Panthers mm. zone. We'll see what they do. But this has got to be a pretty tense environment. Both of these teams wanting to hoist that cup tonight. And the fans, the amount of money they paid to be there tonight, wow, they really want to see their team win. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's going to be crazy there, no doubt here. 11 to 9, Florida out shooting uh, Edmonton uh, right now in this one. Uh, what, so who else are you thinking here? I mean, uh, Connor McDavid, we need points for him for you, right? That's uh, kind of yeah. the big one. But if you were going to throw uh, a couple of bucks here on the next goal, who is it by? You know what? I really look at the Florida Panthers, and it has to be Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk has to come out here yes. and really step up for his team. And I think he has every ability to. And I think you look at Matthew Kachuk, and he's one of those players that lets things get under his skin, and it puts a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. He knows that all of the Edmonton fans are calling him dirty, that everyone behind Edmonton is saying he is causing all of these problems out there on the ice. He's a smart player. He knows how to get under players' skin. And yes, he hits hard, but I do think Matthew Kachuk has every ability to get that goal. I would look at him. I looked at him going into this one for his two plus points because of the value that was coming in close to yeah. plus 280. But it was good to see Verhage finally get on the board. You got to look at Barkov. Yeah. Though. Barkov, absolutely, for the Florida Panthers, is a must bet tonight. Uh, yep. Joe, you got about a minute. What about this Padres game? It's getting ready to start. Corbin's on the on the bump for Washington, and we got a couple guys that really are Washington fans. But I mean, can you can you help help yeah. them out with this game, please? No, you can't bet the Washington Nationals. I've been a big supporter of them. I've been loving yeah, betting sure. on them, but not with Corbin here. Corbin, I struggle to back in this one with Matt Waldron coming out here for the San Diego Padres. I'm looking at Waldron to go over his 18 and a half outs in this. That's coming in at plus 122. I do think he can come out nice and strong against Washington Nationals lineup. We look at him, what he was able to do last week versus the Phillies, and he came out so phenomenally hot. If he can do this, versus the Nats, you know, he can go into the seventh inning. So I love him over the 18 and a half outs. Love it. Knuckleballer, too. Outstanding stuff by him here. It is fade Patrick Corbin day, after all. All right, Joe, uh, we appreciate it. TV time out there. We do have still a 1-1 game. I'm with you. Let's go, Kachuk. We got to get uh, – he's had a couple of really good opportunities – Early in this one, like to see him convert it. All right, in game live prime time. Be back after this.
anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. you got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at, at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, they're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. You know we also love? The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Jaron Ari alongside Dave Sherpan. About 12 minutes ago in the second period, knotted up, still one apiece. Uh, Florida still leading uh, in shots on goal 12 to 11, but the uh, physicality uh, looks like it is continuing here. A couple of really nice shots on Skinner, a couple of nice saves uh, for him, but uh, Florida keeping the pressure on here, uh, Dave, and this is looking a lot more like the first three games as far as intensity goes and opportunities go where Florida just kept the pressure on Skinner here. Uh, certainly seem to be the more physical team right now as well. Uh, I, it's exactly what you would hope to have seen from Florida at this point. If you're backing them here, this looks like a different team than the one that we saw over the last couple of games. I'm good with all of it. I'm getting yeah. everything that I could have possibly wanted in this game seven. We got a tie game almost halfway through, minimal penalties yep. and good goaltending. I feel like the refs are letting them play. I think we're getting disciplined play from both teams. There's not a lot of nonsense yep. afterward. This is everything you could have asked unless you had the over. You need more goals. I, I'm telling you. Yeah, I, yeah. First period went over. Second period looks like it's going under. I don't know if we're getting a goal. We might get one. I yep. don't think we're getting two. So, so yep. far, so good uh, for that. 13 shots to 11 shots. Florida's leading. Florida's out hitting them as well. The physicality's matched on yep. both sides. They're going to the net. I, I Dare I say, this Joe, next goal win? Are we at that yep. point? Wow. We've, we've done this before. Knock on wood. Next goal win? Yep. Yep. Knock on wood. That would be uh, absolutely fantastic if that was the case. 11 minutes to go here. But it is certainly following uh, the kind of script that we thought. A couple of quick goals. Uh, we got six and a half in game for a total that, uh, that we thought was kind of a no-brainer. Hitting the under on yep. that. Uh, which is great. Uh, still, the book's not going to do a whole lot with the side. Still uh, pretty even as far as that oh. goes. So you still have an right. opportunity no. one way or the other. Oh, no. Time. No, I just checked oh, the scores, no. the baseball scores. Oh, Did the no. Blue Jays just They're give up awful. that big leap? 
Did the Blue Jays just give up yeah, their big yeah, yeah. lead Listen. again? It's, well, they went to the was... bullpen. Give them credit. Oh, my. The bases were loaded. They went to the bullpen. And then the bullpen came in and gave up the single to tie the game. So, 6-6. Six, six, uh, still two outs, by the way. Everything with two outs, uh, which is really <laughs> funny. Uh, so, uh, this is a brand new game. Once again, another bullpen uh, blow up by Toronto mm. here. No lead is safe. But they are heading to the top of the ninth there. I believe we got second and third with the Rays. Uh, it is 3-2 right now in this one. So a couple of uh, couple of problems with the bullpens uh, here. Dave, by the way, the Guardians still close it out. Uh, so they the Orioles with another loss, Dave. Ouch. Uh, what is that, four in a row now? Right. Yeah. yeah. They went to the Yankees, brutal. and they had to go down to Houston mm. and, and got the lumps. Uh, taken down Oof. there, and then they go to play Cleveland. This is a little rough stretch where this is yeah. this is one of those things, right? You see, and it kind of separates the good teams. Everybody has to play that stretch where they play good team and then good team and on yep. the road and blow out the pitching staff. Like you know, the the, the bullpen is is gassed. Happens. Yep. What about the yep. Joe was talking about the Cubs and the Giants. That one's coming up here shortly, getting ready to start. I don't know. Steel Miller, that screams the way these two teams are playing, screams under to me. I can't believe the Cubs are favored yeah. on the road. I can't. Does yeah. that say 70 what percent? This computer's got yeah. 75% to the Cubs? Yes. I can't believe yep. it. I like yep. the Giants. I like the Giants and I like the under. I, I, oh. I want nothing to do uh, with the Cubs on any level, especially uh, right? having to what? Now they're in, uh, uh, and I believe, are uh, the Giants in town or they had to fly out? Did they not? I believe they had to fly, uh, yeah, they had to fly across uh, after that uh, Sunday. Isn't that how it usually works, right? Sunday night baseball, you're home, late game, yeah. you lose, you got to hop on a plane, now you got to go out west, now you got to take on the Giants team. Uh, who, by the way, has got a few issues of their own. But, I mean, listen, yeah. advantage pitching-wise, I'd give Steele the credit. I would look maybe Baltimore first five. I mean, uh, Chicago first five. But okay. uh, as far as full game goes, the better bullpen is the Giants. Uh, and that would be the only way that I would look. Aren't we supposed to automatically fade teams the following day after a Sunday night game, Dave? Isn't that how it works? Yeah, I don't. Yes. I mean, right? The Mets, they, so, the Mets were can't so fade good. the Mets. They're not playing. By the way, <laughs> did you see <laughs> that stuff that Diaz had on his hand last Ugh. night? It, he got kicked out of the game, Joe, before he threw a pitch. They examined him and said, "What are it you doing out here? What is all that on your hand?" Yeah, and he, he looked at his glove like, "Like, well, I, 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 I don't know how that got on there." Mm. I couldn't believe yeah, it. I have no idea. Yeah. I well, have no idea how that happened. I do. You're out I do. You emptied yeah, an entire thing of pine tar on there, so I know exactly how that works. Uh, works. Ten games, yeah. I believe, they gave him uh, as well. That suspension was handed down earlier, so uh, the Mets will have to be without their closer for ten games, but quite honestly, the way they're hitting the ball, it might not, uh, it might not be – a problem one way or the other is everyone else has uh, clearly stepped up their game uh, for the New York Mets here. Uh, also, a couple of games that did just start, though, the Rangers jumped all over the Brewers right now. 2 nothing quickly uh, in that one, Dave. The Cardinals 4-1 over the Braves as Lance Lynn was still pitching into the seventh inning, uh, and the Cardinals' bottom of the seventh are threatening to score Again, so the Cardinals starting to play some good baseball there. And I, I, I'll say it again, and Tennessee is now uh, still uh, taking advantage of Texas A&M here. It could be their first national championship here as they just hit a ball they're five still one. looking for. It looks like, yeah, 5-1, not good here. Uh, but also, White Sox... Nothing. Dodgers, nothing. Dave, they went through five innings. No score. Crochet. Perfect. Seven and a half strikeouts was his prop. And now we've got to check to see, has he struck out eight 
of the Dodger players. Yeah. That's going to be the interesting thing. I feel like I'm looking oh, at cards. I can play cards. He's got. He's that would got, be great if he did. Six, six, six and he's eight. out of the game. Yeah, he he's fell one game. short. But look yeah. at Paxton. Why? Pa- like, even so, they don't score runs for Paxton, and he's still giving them a chance to win here as also, we all stuck a fork games. in him. That's yeah. Also, bonk. six Ks, three bonkers. hits, and still in the game. Yes. I don't know, Joe. Bad lineups are still bad lineups. It's good to pitch. It's it's good to go on pitchers that are pitching above expectations on bad teams. Yes. Yes. You still need runs. You still need runs. That was a good play. Uh, White Sox and under in the first five. Yep. That made perfect sense. Play both of those. You split the White Sox one. You know, you get that back on a push unless you took the half a run. But yeah, under. That game in game under yep. right now is let me click refresh. Gotta be we three and a half. At that three and a half. And a it's half. Three and I a mean, half. What? Crazy. Yep. Oh, Absolutely we crazy. Oh, there. give me the goal. Give me the horn. Uh-oh. Give Uh-oh. me the horn. Uh-oh. Come on. Let's get Uh-oh. it going here, people. Come on. Stanley College short the Florida Panthers. Man. Get the back wow. of the Nets uh, here as they are now up uh, two to one. We'll have more on that here. goal here with about four minutes to go. Another one here in Game Live. Prime time continues. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. You got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games, They're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love... The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live uh, prime time and updates galore here. Almost just had another goal uh, by the Panthers there with an opportunity with a wraparound, just couldn't control the puck there. Uh, Cam Stewart stepping in, uh, joining us. It is now a 2 1 Florida Panther lead, three and a half minutes to go in the second. And Cam, uh, if you're Florida, this is kind of exactly going the way you had hoped it would go. You score first, you sk- you have a lead going into the third, hopefully, and you let the rest take care of itself from that point. 
Well, Bobrovsky can do his thing. Florida looks pretty good, Joe, but got to give Edmonton full marks. When Verhege scored, Janmark came back and tied it up yeah. real quick. So Edmonton, they're just a team Ooh. that, you know what I mean? They got a lot of guts. So this is, we got a hockey game here, two to one. Um, I don't know. Edmonton's going to probably take some more chances. Defenseman pinching, that could probably leave the backdoor play open for Florida. They're playing a lot more aggressive tonight, similar to the first couple mm. of games in this series, pounding the players, finishing their checks, and doing more. Tonight, very aggressive. Like before, they were a lot more passive. Dave and I talked about it on Bostonian versus the book yep. today. They totally changed their style. They kind of look like the old Panthers now. They're playing a, a better game, a more physical game, and, and matching Edmonton speed. So it's been a great ho- great game. These teams are coming out. This is a game seven of the Stanley Cup. This is what we expect. Yeah. It's been fantastic so far. This is yep. all you could ask for as a hockey guy, as a hockey fan, as a sports fan. A decider game to win the championship. Both teams playing ideally the way they want to, and it's close. We talked about Florida being more physical tonight. They're being more aggressive in the slot, too. They're getting in front of the net. Um, You did come on Bostonian versus the book today with an outstanding performance, and that'll be on later tonight after you guys. better bring uh, the bleep button, Dave. (laughs) There's a lot of bleep buttons. You can bet that that went over. You were unbelievable. But you also gave us – (laughs) <laughs> you gave us the first goal score. That was, to, I mean, talk about yep. that real quick here. That was a great call. He got in front of the net. That tip was unbelievable, Cam. Yeah, for yep. he's, he scored the ah. goal in the, in the opener. Ooh. I had him tonight. It was funny. FanDuel had a thing. Did anybody have for, for Heggy 13 to 1? I was going to put me. And then I thought, that's really bad karma to like sound like a jackass and like give myself mm. the Barry Horowitz because I just don't believe it. Like, I, I'm glad I won. I, it would have ruined anything else, Dave, because when I get one from Gambler, I don't get many. I just shut my mouth and hopefully I can get another. That's kind of the way I am. Just it's kind of like that guy in the bench. I'm a fourth liner. I got my goal. The coach will put me out again and hopefully I can score again. We scored with Ty Hatton this week. We got Verhege. So we're starting to turn this train around. If uh, Scotty Scheffler didn't exist, uh, I can tell you one thing. My house would be paid off. Yeah. yeah. I, got, <laughs> well, some ba- I got some baseball bets too, Joe, and we're talking toilet bowl Go. specials. I gave Pat Paul oh. under, under, oh. under eight. Live, we'll tell you, I think that these games just started. So under eight in Washington, San Diego. I know we got gas cans on the hill here, but I don't care. Wow. The bats yep. are cold on both teams. Give me the under eight in that baseball game. Slight lean to the Oakland A's. I am doing something crazy. I'm betting on Patrick what? Corbin over three and a half yes. strikeouts plus 105. Yes. That, that number is too low. And I got even another loser one for you. Here we go. Shut them up there, boys. Griffin Canning, what? under five and a half. Yes. Under 50 cents. He will not have six strikeouts tonight. Hey, Canning, beat it. Go to the Canning factory and give yes. me some smell. You turkey. Get Love three that. and get out of the game. Let's go. I have a oh, lead to the Oakland A's plus 125 gross. as well as my complete oh. garbage bag, bag of Love fleas, wow. maggot yes. special, whatever the heck you want to call it. <laughs> no on that game. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only person betting on that game. That's the one where I'm oh. in the book working and you go, hey, I want to bet the Oakland and, and, and the Angels game. And I'm like, seriously? This is great. That You're is the first great. person no, to bet on it more. today. Yep. I'm not crazy, Dave, but you guys expect something from me. Like they call Yanmark the custodian. <laughs> That's his nickname yes. in Edmonton. I'm the garbage man of sports grid. I pick up everybody's love trash. This. Always looking for a spare meal. Joe, you left that Here sandwich? Right Just give it to me. I'm still hungry. Give me that. Joe it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't throw it out. Give it to the garburator. That's Oakland. Oh, under it. in the Washington oh. game and strikeouts under galore. You know what, Joe? Betting on Patrick Corbin overs. Overs, I must have I need my head examined, but three and a half is too low for me, and I'll take the plus money. I, I think he can get I, the four. Come on. Coming Let's off go. his best start of the year, Cam. He just yeah. won. He's, he just won his last start. So I'm with you there. I, it's Thank so you, disgusting. It's beautiful. Uh, speaking of disgusting, by the way, Boston just walked it off on Toronto. Yep. Uh, seven I, six. I, uh, I told Dave this team is unbeatable. I don't know what said, they're doing, Joe. I don't understand. They haven't fired wow. Big John Stud. They haven't done anything. They just walk okay. out, yep. take the diamond, and lose every night. What the hell is going on here? They get swept by I the agree. tribe, sorry, the Guardians, and now they go in and get this uh, and lose a heartbreaker with a six to two lead, mind you, to Boston. Yep. It's a lesson out there for everybody. Bet against the Jays live. Whatever, anything you could do against these guys. They're a train wreck. Wow. I wish they weren't my team because you could make tons of money fading these guys. They got to be one of the worst bets in baseball. Wow. Oh, what, what are you expecting here um, in the third period? 
Like, does this I mean, thing actually get to the over of the hockey game? I, I don't think it does. I, I don't know I mean, if this does. is going to be another bad beat if it mm. does. I got to tell you, Dave, well, the thing is, say, uh, if it's 2-2, then I think it might be, might have that score that I told you on the book, 3-2 Florida yep. overtime is what I gave you on the yep. show today. I'm not yep. sure if that's going to happen. I don't know if people can handle uh, this game going to Oof. overtime, if their, if their hearts could take it. But if Florida gets that next one, that's when I would think about the over if they get three to one yep. because Edmonton could a pull four one. Could we we could have a four one five one scenario like we had with uh, Edmonton doing that to Florida the last game. That's the dangerous thing, the three goal lead because the goal. This is it. This is game seven. So you pull them and then you just keep them pulled. That's the bottom line until yep. you get a couple. So we if, if Florida gets it makes it three one, I think it could end five one. If it's two two, I think they play it uh, tight and then we'll go to overtime, and. Mm. Then it'll get re- really stupid, Joe. As stupid as my Patrick Corbin yeah. bet. Yeah. I love it. It's uh, it's interesting, Cam. It looks like they made a decision there with Florida that anybody but Connor McDavid, because uh, yep. I haven't seen him. Uh, right? I mean, it's it kind of feels like that was Unreal. the decision they made. He's not doing to uh, do us again. It's not going to happen. Markov's been good. They've been playing good defense on him, keeping him shaded yep. to the boards, and it's a good strategy, yep. right? Let somebody else beat you. Hey. I got to hand it to the Oilers, yeah. though. A lot of their other players like Fogel and Janmark and these stepped guys up. have stepped up. But this is game seven. You're going to need Connor and Dreisaitl. Look who scored for Florida, yep. for Heggy and Bennett. These guys got it done yep. in a big game. Great so we'll point. see. Great point, Cam. All right, Cam's coming up top of the hour, of course. They'll have the conclusion of the Stanley Cup Finals. Dave and I will be back here. We'll wrap it up with in-game live prime time on the grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. 11 and 12. I know you're going to get Mafia excited here. Hot and bothered. we got to put Aaron Rodgers here and the Jets at 11. I would put him higher, but again, he barely played football last season. They've addressed their offensive line. It's not going to be great. The depth at wide receiver is a problem for me. Defense, perhaps the best in the National Football League. If Rodgers plays 14 games... They're probably going to win that division over the Bills. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Rory Mack, it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love... The losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live Prime Time. We are at the end of the second period here with the Florida Panthers. Wow, Sam Reinhardt, Verhage, two goals in this game. Uh, they are up two one, and this is exactly the spot the Panthers wanted to be in. Dave, uh, they did not want to be trailing heading into the third. They wanted the lead, uh, and they had the lead. This is very reminiscent of those first three games. I don't know where this team has been. 
But this was what we got the first three games, and they are uh, certainly locked in here uh, tonight uh, with a 2-1 lead. But the big question we're asking is, if they hold on, and Florida, I, I believe nobody did better in the playoffs in the third period. I mean, the shot differential and the uh, the score, I believe, for the Panthers, the differential in the third period against just about everyone they played was when Florida has a lead heading into a third, they've done an amazing job of finishing. But if it finishes 2-1, let's say, Dave, who, who's the yep. Conn Smythe winner? So I learned uh, today that they turned in the votes for this halfway through the third period. So mm. anything that's happened tonight is kind of short-term memory. And you see the numbers. And, you know, we got Sammy producing the show and the boys watching the show and watching the game. And it's moving as we speak. Now, before the game, yep. it was minus 4,000. So that means it was 40 to 1. You had to lay 40 to win one. $40,000 to win a dime. Now it's minus 400. And five mm. minutes ago, while we were talking about it, it was minus 260. So hopefully the guys at, uh, at FanDuel, I mean, I hope they're watching the show and they enjoy the show. Um, they better move that number up. Who's going to win? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think <laughs> win or lose, it was his award before this game. Yes, right. he's not done anything, but he hasn't done anything to hurt him either, and no one on Florida has done anything to overtake him still being a point or two away right. from setting the all-time record or tying Gretzky, whose jersey I have on, by the way. This is a jersey uh, at, at, at yep. Wayne Gretzky special. But I don't think anything can be changed enough to go, okay. I mean, there might be value in betting minus 400 on something that two hours ago – was minus four thousand, so correct. I, it's his, isn't it? His? I mean, I think it's his. It's, it's well, the, the that number is telling you uh, it is, unless something crazy happens here early, uh, and that includes with Florida, uh, Barkoff or somebody scoring, or Vehagi scoring another goal, uh, something along those lines. Uh, it's you know, an accumulation, right? It's a it's a playoff award, not just the finals award. So uh, right. many will argue that he did win or lose. He did enough pretty much if it would have ended in four, five, six. It's, it's going to be uh, his award. I believe this is only the second time, Dave, it's ever been done where uh, if a losing team gets the consequence, it's only... It's only happened one other time, I believe. I think in the modern, uh, in in the modern era, yeah. Modern um, era, right? It, yeah. It, yeah, like it happened Makes the first sense. couple of times they even did this, like in the 40s and stuff. Yep. But then, or, um, God, they didn't even play an ice back then. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Right. Hextall for the Flyers they did ice. it. They gave it to the goalie. <laughs> um, mm. So I don't know. He's the guy. Oh. There's, there, there's yep. no, I, I don't really think there's a question, but we'll see. Nope. Um, what are you going to do now for the third period? I'm getting texts right now. My kids and everybody are at a big Stanley Cup watch party. I ran into some people Ooh. that I hadn't seen for a number of years at the Savannah Bananas game on Saturday night at the ballpark, which I highly recommend Very if you haven't nice. seen, if you like baseball. He said, come over to yep. the house, bring the kids. I got the pool ready. They're going to go swimming, and I'm going to eat my face off and watch hockey, Joe. What are you doing for the next hour? I am, uh, as soon as we're done here, I am going to lay one more large wager on the minus one and a half goals for the Panthers and then just uh, walk away and see what happens. So uh, I will uh, I will bet the Panthers win this game 3-1 here. They will win by more than a goal. And so no plus overtime. Money, you don't want to see overtime. No well, I'm going to have, regardless, I'm going to hedge it out anyway, but I, I do think the Panthers, an empty net, could very well be in play if they continue to have the lead okay. halfway through. Okay. You know how that works. Yeah. So here we'll we go. We'll sweat Corbin. Might as well. We'll, well. we'll sweat the Nationals game for, for Sam. Oh, we'll, I, we'll I hate to do it, but we're going to have no choice. Congratulations, Tennessee, by the way, on winning a national championship. Gosh. We'll see you again tomorrow in Game Live Prime Time. Enjoy. Ha, ha, ha.